Okay, so we saw what an instance variable was, a bit of data associated with a specific object. Now let's look at something new. This is what they call local or temp variables. Let's look at our first message. Transcript, so class. Let's create a variable, a class, cone equals class is, period. Notice a class is not defined. This time when we save it, we're going to say make it a method temporary variable. These two bars here are used to define variables that will only be accessible within the code where they appear. So let's create something like, well, let's change this slightly. A class is semicolon. Now you will see. A class appears to be unused. Okay to remove it? No. So let's just say a class, comma, self class, and save it. Now, if we were to type my test first message and, and do it. It will see the modified first message. Class is test. You see we had a variable we defined only for this part of the, the method. This method right here, here, first message. And a class is going to appear only within this message. It's not an instance variable. It's what they call a temp variable or a local variable. It's local to first message. Now, there's two other things we could talk about right now. That is class methods, which there are none defined for our test. And there's class variables, which again, there are none defined for our test. And I won't explain too much about them except to say that sometimes you want to have a method that, a method that applies to all classes, all objects of a certain class. For instance, say we have the class test. Test, we send the class all instances and then print it. And we see that we have three instances, three objects that are of type class. We could also say all instances size and just get the number of test objects that exist right now. And there's three of them. There's a also a class variable. Suppose we had a Windows class and we wanted Windows to automatically show gray title bars unless we said something different. Then we could create a class variable that would say the color of the menu bar is gray and all objects would then be able to work with the gray color. We wouldn't have to set it individually for every object. We could set it in the initialize and actually look at the class variable and if at some point we wanted to change the color of all windows we could change the class variable and that would make all new windows a different color. So we are now ready to start actually coding our own code with Smalltalk.